teams often struggle to make good decisions, dragging down their team's performance. In fact, one of the key predictors of team performance is the decision-making process employed by the team. But many of us don't use any structured approach to solve problems that make decisions, and our teams suffer from the lack of structure. The devil's advocacy technique involves a group developing a solid argument for a recommended course of action, then subjecting that recommendation to an in-depth formal critique. The critique calls into question the assumptions and recommendations presented to the devil's advocate and attempts to show why the recommendations should not be adopted. Through repeated criticism and revision, the approach leads to mutual acceptance of a recommendation. Many analysis tools are available to improve the way you make decisions. Three useful examples of these tools are the devil's advocate technique, plus-minus interesting or PMI analysis, and the ease and effect matrix. There are many others, but for the purpose of this course, these three are very relevant. In a group situation, individuals desire to conform and reach consensus can damage the decision-making process, especially at step 3, 4 and 5. The danger arises because of three factors to which groups are susceptible. Groupthink, majority influence and polarization. With groupthink, the drive for consensus and group cohesion leads everyone to decide on a specific alternative before they've looked sufficiently at the options available. Majority influence, the drive for conformity, can lead to agreement on whatever the majority thinks is right. Participants with other views either don't voice them or are swayed by what the majority decides. If there is no dissent, it can polarize the decision. Views become more and more extreme because there are no conflicting perspectives to moderate them. If dissent is encouraged in a group setting, it helps to free people from the drive to conform. It also stimulates the search for information and helps members to tackle an issue from a range of perspectives. In turn, this encourages creative solutions, so even when opposing ideas are wrong or inappropriate, they can improve the decision-making process. The Devil's Advocate technique works on this premise. To use the Devil's Advocate technique, you assign a person the role of Devil's Advocate. This person must challenge group assumptions, question alternatives, bring in ideas previously not considered, and provide alternate perspectives or solutions. For this to be truly successful, the person you assign to the role should be experienced or an expert in the field. Quite often, the Devil's Advocate's challenge will prompt decision makers to revise or reject their initial ideas in favor of more effective ones. This technique is most helpful at stage 4 of the decision-making process as alternatives are being evaluated. Here you have an example of the Devil's Advocate technique. Scott and Gail work for an interior decorator involved in the construction of a retirement home. They, they are currently discussing issues of safety and issues regarding the project. Follow along as Scott plays the role of Devil's Advocate and prompts Gail to think of alternatives. The practice question related to the dialogue follows on the next slide. Please stop the video to read carefully the dialogue. Now, try to answer to this question. Which statement from Gail and Scott, from their conversation, represent the use of the Devil's Advocate technique? As usual, let's see together. The first option is correct. By bringing up issues that are not normally considered when designing a coffee area, Scott enriches the discussion and helps ensure all possibilities are covered. The second option is also correct. By bringing the problem of potential accidents into the discussion, Scott focuses the, the discussion on safety as a major requirement in the coffee area. The third option is incorrect. This statement is defensive rather than challenging. It's not an example of a person playing the role of a devil's advocate. The fourth option is also incorrect. This statement doesn't challenge a suggestion and therefore isn't an example of using the devil's advocate technique. 
The fifth option is again correct. Scott is questioning the alternative that Gail proposes. This prompts Gail to respond to the new concern of the coffee area's look and feel. The last option is also correct. Scott is questioning the strongly held belief that the coffee area is beneficial. Gail then has to justify her position and think it through clearly. By intentionally, intentionally questioning or challenging the points that Gail makes, Scott encourages deeper thought about the options. Ultimately, this is likely to result in the team making better decisions. In fact, when ideas have been carefully critiqued and refined to devil's advocacy, decision makers tend to find them more accept acceptable and satisfying. Remember, the devil's advocacy decision making technique is where the group is allowed to become the critic in the proposed decision. This technique helps prevent groupthink and increase the chance of a high quality decision. Next and the last lecture in this course is on PMI analysis and ease and effect.